Welcome back. In this lecture, I will continue my discussion on energetics of radical chain polymerization and I will also discuss thermodynamics of chain polymerization, molecular weight distribution and give you example of some common polymers which are synthesized by radical chain polymerization. So, these are the topics I will try to cover in this lecture, maybe I will spill over few of these topics to next lecture. I have started discussing on temperature dependence on polymerization rate for thermal initiation in last lecture. This is the Arrhenius equation all of us know, A is the pre exponential factor, E is the activation energy, K is the rate constant. Now, in case of radical chain polymerization, we have actually three rates which consist of polymerization process, initiation, propagation and termination. So, the effect of temperature on polymerization rate would depend on how temperature actually affect all these three rates. So, we have shown in the last lecture that rate of polymerization can be expressed by this expression using the Arrhenius equation and E r is the composite or combination of this activation energies of propagation, decomposition and termination. And we showed that this is a positive quantity which means that with increasing temperature the reaction rate for thermal initiation actually goes up. Now, let us talk about how temperature dependence on molecular weight or how actually temperature affect molecular weight in radical chain polymerization and we will first talk about thermal initiation. So, this is the expression we derived in last few lectures. This is the kinetic chain length which is also related to molecular weight or degree of polymerization. Now, this is proportional to this rate constant and again how temperature affects this rate constant that will determine how temperature affects degree of polymerization and molecular weight. So, we just do the same thing, take logarithm of this expression and we get in this case the activation energy for molecular weight formation or degree of polymerization is given by this composite expression and for thermal initiation E d is the highest compared to E p and E t. So, this we can write as activation energy for degree of polymerization or molecular weight and this is then we can just write uh, x n from this expression like this just writing this uh, this term in terms of this. Now, this activation this is the combination of or composite activation energy for activation energy of degree of polymerization or activation energy of molecular build up. Now, this term I have given the values in last lecture. So, the difference in this case there is a negative sign here compared to a positive sign in case of rate of polymerization. So, this would be a negative quantity. So, this would be a negative quantity and value is approximately minus 60 kilojoule per mole, which means that with increasing temperature the molecular weight or degree of polymerization actually gets reduced. So, if you plot the temperature effect on rate of polymerization and molecular weight in thermally initiated radical chain polymerization. So, if you plot uh, R p rate of polymerization with uh, 1 by t 1 by t then we get this expression. 
So, rate actually increases with temperature. If we plot degree of polymerization or molecular weight, then we see that it is actually 1 by it is 1 by t. So, with temperature Xn or molecular weight actually decreases with temperature. So, if we want to increase the reaction rate, we want to make more and more polymer in a shorter time, then we can increase the temperature, but the downside is that if we increase the temperature in thermal initiated polymerization, the number of number of molecular weight actually value actually comes up and that is because with increasing the temperature more and more radical gets produced. So, more and more termination reaction because it is a bimolecular reaction. So, more and more termination reaction takes place as a result your number of or molecular weight number or molecular weight values actually comes down. Now, let us talk about the temperature dependence of polymerization rate for redox polymerization and in redox polymerization we have seen this expression earlier which means that redox polymerization rate also depend on these three rate constant. And we have similar expressions like thermal initiation. So, we have this value. So, only difference between thermal initiation and redox initiation in this case about the value of this dissociation activation energy for dissociation activation energy of propagation and activation energy for termination remain same because they are the same reaction. Only the initiation mechanism is different in case of radical uh, initiator a thermal initiator and redox initiation or we will talk about photo initiation. So, this value actually differs for different initiation mechanism and for a redox initiation this value is typically around uh, 40 to 60 kilojoule per mole. Now, which uh, gives is this is a positive number and this comes around 40 kilojoule per mole. What about the reaction rate in photopolymerization? We know this expression again and in this case uh, the reaction rate is dependent only on K p and K t because the dissociation mechanism does not depend on temperature, it only depends on the intensity of the light which is initiating the photo dissociation. So, it is proportional to K p and K t to the power half. So, we can get a activation energy composite activation energy like this. Now, in this case E d is not there E d is 0 because E d is not the initiation mechanism or the dissociation mechanism not dependent on temperature. So, this value is again positive, but the magnitude of this uh, value is quite less. So, in this case the effect of temperature on polymerization rate is uh, mild. We will talk about dependence of polymerization rate and molecular rate together just a sum up of all the initiation process. So, in this case this is we are talking about polymerization rate and if we recall the numbers. So, this is the E d for thermal initiation, this is E d for redox initiation and in photo in initiation case E d is 0 because it does not depend on temperature. So, this is this is also positive number, this is also positive number, but because this E d for thermal initiation is higher it is approximately 120 to 150 kilojoule per mole whereas 
TD in case of redox initiation is about 40 to 60 as I mentioned in last uh, slide. So, the effect of temperature in case of thermally initiated polymerization would be much higher than effect of temperature on redox initiated polymerization. Now, in this case this is 0, but because this value comes around total value of E r comes around 20 kilojoule, so it is mild. The effect of temperature on photopolymerization rate is small. Now, if we talk about molecular weight, then again this is a negative quantity because this value of E d is high. So, it is a negative quantity and it comes around minus 60 kilojoule per mole, whereas this comes close to 0 and in this case it is again same as 20 kilo, kilo joule per mole. So, in this case in case of thermally initiation uh, thermally induced initiation the molecular weight comes down with increasing temperature, but in case of redox initiation the molecular weight is almost independent of temperature and in case of photopolymerization the, the molecular weight is mildly, uh, mildly related to dependent on temperature. In case of photopolymerization actually both the rate of reaction and the molecular weight increases slightly with temperature that is the only exception compared to other two. Please remember these points. Now, let us revise the typical value of the reaction parameters. These three are concentration terms these three are concentration term, concentration of initiator, concentration of monomer and concentration of radical species at steady state. S means S at subscript means it is a we are talking about steady state value. This is these are all concentration term. So, the unit would be in concentration moles per liter. Now, the corresponding value this is a typical value generally observed for radical chain polymerization you see the initiator concentration is much lower compared to monomer concentration and just look at the concentration of radical species in at steady state which is very low and it is very difficult to experimentally determine the, the amount or the concentration of radical species in, in, a, in steady state. These three are rate, rate of initiation, rate of propagation at steady state and rate of termination. So, the concentration would be uh, the unit would be concentration by time and if you look at the number the initiation rate is quite low whereas termination termination is uh, I think there is a mistake in terms of um, this, this should be positive and this should be positive. So, let me correct this. So, initiation rate and is very slow whereas, the rate of polymerization is uh, much higher or rate of propagation is much higher and even rate of termination is uh, oh no, just, just I think these numbers are fine. We are talking about rate in this case. So, let me talk about the rate constant. This is the 
average lifetime of a radical before it gets terminated which comes around 0.1 seconds to 10 seconds. So, which means that the average lifetime of a radical is very low, it is in actually very uh, seconds 0.1 seconds to 10 seconds. And when you talk about the rate constants, K d is the dissociation rate constant which is a first order reaction. So, we have unit is second inverse and these are both are second order reactions. So, we have unit like this and corresponding value of K d and K p and K t is given. So, K t is very high the reaction rate constant is very high not the reaction rate. Just to clarify R t is quite small because the concentration of radicals are very small. If the reaction rate was very high, if the reaction rate of termination was very high then obviously, there would have not been any polymerization because termination would have happened in much faster rate than the propagation step. But inherently the reaction rate constant is very high. The rate is low because the concentration of the radical species in the reaction mixture is very low. Whereas, in case of propagation we have reaction between a monomer and a radical. The monomer concentration is much higher compared to the radical species that is why the rate constant even if the rate constant is lower in this case, but the reaction rate is higher compared to termination reaction. K t is reaction between two radicals where K p is reaction between one monomer and one radical species that is why the rate constant for termination reaction is much higher than propagation and because dissociation reaction is not a radical reaction this is much slower inherently much slower rate constant is much slower compared to the other two radical reaction. So, just to summarize that both the initiation rate and the dissociation rate constants are low, but the inherent reaction rate constant for termination reaction is very high even higher than rate of rate constant for propagation, but because the concentration of radical species is lower very low in the reaction medium, the rate of termination is lower compared to rate of propagation and as a result we have polymer production before a radical species get terminated. Now, we will talk about some of the features of steady state equation for rate of polymerization and degree of polymerization. Now, as we explained earlier this is when you are talking about not, not means degree of polymerization in absence of any transfer reactions. Now, we have seen this expression many times rate of polymerization and this is the kinetic chain length. We have seen this expression this is related to molecular weight and degree of polymerization. Now, we will concentrate on the concentration of monomer and concentration of initiator. So, rate of polymerization is dependent on monomer and initiator whereas, the molecular weight or degree of, degree of polymerization dependent on um, these factors. Now, you can see that as the reaction progresses, as the polymerization reaction progresses, both the monomer concentration and the initiator concentration 
comes down. So, as a result the reaction rate actually should become lower and lower and ultimately when we do not have any monomer initiator in the medium then it should become 0. Whereas, the molecular depends on if both how this factor how this ratio changes and that is a very complicated uh, scenario and as a result there is always chance that the molecular or the polymers which is getting produced their molecular weight could be different at the beginning than in the middle or than in the later stage of polymerization because this ratio may not remain same during different time of polymerization. So, sometimes what happen in commercial production they actually charge the monomer and initiator intermittently to keep this, this ratio uh, almost same. So, that the resulting polymer remains or the size of the resulting polymers or the molecular weight of the resulting polymers remains more or less same. So, that we do not have a large distribution of molecular weight. And as this monomer initiator concentration keeps on changing, so this rate, these equations are instantaneous equation. Now, it may happen that diffusion of the radical species can also affect the rate of propagation and termination. For example, we know rate of propagation or rate of polymerization is this where one radical species and one monomer is involved whereas, in case of termination two radical species are involved. Now, ideally as we have seen in last uh, slide that if we plot rate versus say our rate versus conversion then after some time instantly we, we actually get a steady state. Now, in steady state because the monomer concentration and the initiator concentration both keeps on coming with conversion as conversion increases both monomer concentration and initiator concentration come down. So, at steady state the reaction rate should slowly or steadily comes down. Now, what happened at the later part when the cons conversion is very high or uh, the reaction mixture contains lots of polymer as a result the viscosity of the medium is very high when the conversion is very high. Now, as a result the diffusion of the radical species becomes slower. Now, it is not that the molecule the radicals which are there in different part they are attracting each other and they are coming close to each other and doing reaction. The reaction is ha happening between two radicals for termination reaction because they are all randomly moving around and when they are colliding they are basically doing the termination reaction. Now, if the reaction mediums viscosity is very high that their translational diffusion is low. So, they cannot come close to each other. So, the reaction cannot happen. Now, in case of polymerization reaction or propagation reaction one radical species is involved, but and which is when the chain length is higher if you have a propagating radical which is a longer size obviously, its diffusion coefficient or your diffusion is going to be much slower than a monomer species. Monomer is because of smaller size it can diffuse much faster compared to a radical 
propagating radical which has a larger size. So, as a result the propagation reaction can continue because this monomer can diffuse and collide with this reaction uh, this radical species and do the propagation reaction. But termination reaction becomes diffusion control because it requires two radical species to come and interact with each other because the diffusion of this long radical species is much lower when the viscosity of the medium is very high as a result termination reaction actually comes down. So, what happened now? Propagation reaction is almost continue at similar rate, but termination reaction is becomes lower. So, as a result effective rate of polymerization actually goes up before it comes down. So, this is the region. So, this should be much higher I, I should have drawn in much uh, closer here, but anyway. So, this is what happened when the conversion is much higher and so this is the region where I have a steady state polymerization, steady state and this is the region where uh, in this is basically transient states, transient non, non steady state and this part is called gel effect because of gel because the molecular weight because now radical the propagation is continuing without any termination. So, molecular weight effectively becomes very large and so large that it cannot move. So, it is like a vitrified uh, um, sample it is like a gel sample, but it is not a proper gel by definition because it is not cross linked, but because it cannot move it. So, it becomes like a gel and we call this is gel effect. There is other uh, name is also there uh, um, in um, like this uh, Tom's drop knowledge effect because they are the scientist which who discovered this. Now, so basically you understood that in a normal radical chain polymerization this might happen that immediately after the reaction after immediately in minutes basically very short period the reaction reaches a steady state and it will continue. So, the action rate, rate becomes slower and slower as the concentration of monomer and initiator keeps on coming down, but at the later state when the conversion is high and the polymer viscosity of the mixture is very high, the diffusion of the propagating radical becomes slower and the reaction becomes diffusion control. So, the reaction the propagation reaction keeps on continuing to happen, but the radical uh, termination reaction actually becomes much lower as a result the reaction rate goes up and the molecular weight also goes up because there is no termination reaction and we get a gel like material and we call this as a gel effect and we have um, and the scientist who discovered Tom's drop Norris effect we can also say. Now, you can also understand or that that if the concentration of monomer initial monomer concentration is higher then this the conversion at which this gel effect starts that will be at lower conversion because if the monomer conversion monomer percentage is higher then the more and more polymers will generate and viscosity will be much higher if compared to a situation where I have the less number of monomer more solvent in the mixture. So, if we 
Now, do the same thing for different uh, initial concentration. So, we have we say uh, we have seen this. Uh, now, let us if we do this, this is the example where we are now changing the monomer concentration and and finding what, the, what is happening. So, in this case, we can plot uh, conversion, conversion versus time and at different So, this is when the percentage of initial mass of monomer is 10 percent this is 40 percent, this is 60 percent, this is 80 percent and this is 100 percent. So, let me write this is 40 percent, this is 60 percent, this is 80 percent and this is 100 percent. So, as you can see that when the concentration of the monomer in the reaction mixture is low, then the reaction can go normal way for longer time, but the react when the concentration becomes much higher, then this gel effect occurs at much lower time at lower conversion value, because then the viscosity of the polymers or the viscosity of the medium becomes much higher even at low conversation, lower conversation. And if the, the Tg which will come later, Tg is uh, higher than the room temperature or the reaction temperature, then the polymers become very hard glassy. So, and so, and if the, the polymers become very glassy material, then some cases no further reaction also possible like in this case even when we started with a pure monomer we cannot even complete the reaction to a 100 percent level. Now, just uh, if we do this reaction in a non isothermal way. For example, if we are not able to take out the or remove the reaction medium, okay, I think I let me start this in the next lecture because I think the time is uh, over for uh, this lecture. So, I will start uh, for the non isothermal situation in the next, next lecture.